Hello Jennies, Genesis Lewison here as always, and today's video, well not the only video today, but this video, we are going to be reviewing the first episode of the serialized movie, probably more or less kind of like uh, It from 1989, Alone. So I watched the trailer and here's my review of it. The trailer looked pretty good, and nice editing, I love the interludes that really gave you an intense creepy vibe, and the music did the same. So when I saw the trailer, I was suspecting to see, you know, a pretty decent, you know, serialized film. So with that review out of the way, I really do want to talk about the film. So let's give a little recap of what happened in it. So the film starts off with the main characters talking on their phones, and then boom, title card, out of nowhere. Pretty neat. The film starts off again after this, and the main character is portrayed by director and creator Greasy Grom, has to go to the store because he forgot toothpaste. Kinda confusing why it's toothpaste, but whatever. But he swears he'll be back in 10 minutes. Actually, in the video, it's about 16, 17, but who cares. Eventually, the other friend, Nico, comes over and, uh, and with Oliver, plays their favorite game, PUBG. After several minutes of just conversation about PUBG and video gaming, to be honest, I think the creators are all good friends of PUBG, the film's main plot begins the role again, with the main character finally entering the film again. He gets given a piece of plain paper from Nico, and the three begin to analyze the piece of paper, supposedly have to do with some sort of plans. Immediately, the world begins to shake using the old-fashioned camera technique of shake the camera as much as you can, and the world gets blown sky high by effing aliens. I'm not making this up. Then we see Oliver watch an emergency broadcast um, announcement, which, and eh, those are always good. I've watched a few in my spare time. I think I've even watched the one in the film. Cool. And Zack, and that's the character who Greasy Grab is portraying, enters the room to um, Oliver's constant screaming to get him. The do discuss the insanity for a moment or two um, that's going on on the earth right now. Um, after a few minutes, they decide to go outside to check for any damage to their home because why wouldn't you? And immediately, they are attacked by a hooded figure who I'm going to call, since he wasn't given a name other than Monster, I'm going to call him Whiteface because I'm pretty sure from the trailer there was a gray monster, so I have so far it's Grayface and Whiteface. As the monster attacks Zack, Oliver enters and they both have to figure out that they can't leave the kitchen area that they're in for 10 minutes due to monsters as some confusing plot hole, but eh, it doesn't matter. Zack barricades the door, but the monster ends up locking them in there himself. They go back upstairs, hoping to be safe, as well as grab some guns. But Oliver decides to not attack, because the fear has shaken him up too much, and he leaves. But again, not before he's forced back by Zack, because Zack's brave. Got all that? Good. Let's continue. After the night, the monster attacks within the home. Maybe morning time, maybe night time. I didn't really know the setting of it, but I'm not too worried. Um, but after that night in the home, um, young Oliver is about to be attacked by the monster before he, he the monster gets sucker punched in the head by young Oliver. My god, at a boy. <laughs> I can't lie, I love Pratt humor sometimes, and that that was actually pretty funny. Eventually the monster is pulled away by some unseen force, and we go to the next morning with Zack returning to give to check on him after the monster attack. Oliver is in a startled, so Zack gives him a piece of chocolate, clearly proof that Remus Lupin was correct. Chocolate stops monster problems. <laughs> Seriously. He ends up being poisoned by the chocolate, but Zack saves him just in time. Eventually, near the end of it, we see a piece of paper that says, You will die. And a giant spider enters the picture, literally in the last 30 minutes. Um, probably setting up the next episode. It nears its end with Zack and Oliver both being terrified of the gi giant arachnid. Finally, we get one last scene of, well, the title card saying, To be continued. And we're done. What can I say? So, this was a pretty decent film. Um, young amateur filmmakers, 
they do their hardest. Trust me, I know I am one. And this is pretty decent. It would be a bit better if it was a little longer, I'm not going to lie. Like, I would have loved if, like, we met Whiteface and then we also had them get attacked by the giant spider. That would have been, like, awesome setup. But that didn't happen, but it's the filmmaker's choice. I'm not going to screw it anyway, other way. Um, the little, the cinematography is a little iffy on me. Um, only because they don't use any of the real, like, the cliche angles, which, I mean, I guess is good, but... Having everything from a, a down to top view, it does get maddening sometimes. But it's not bad. Don't let me get you wrong. They still do some good scenes. Clearly using their environment to get some of the shots. Um, the acting, I think the acting's pretty good, in all honesty. Um, because Greasy Grob knows how to act. That's not surprising. The Oliver actor, uh, I think his real name is that, but if it's not, I don't know. He acts pretty decently. I mean, I do enjoy his acting. Um, and then finally, the Nico character, I, I want to say he's a good actor because he was a really good actor, just like the rest of them. But after watching it, I don't know where he went. It's kind of, he kind of just disappeared, but maybe that's, maybe that's to happen in the next episode. Maybe he'll come back. I don't know. I'll review that as well when it comes, but yeah. Um, writing, the writing sounded pretty ad-libbed, which I'm not going to shit on because I love ad-libbing. No scripts, no, no scripts, no problems. That's what I always say. So to me, it felt pretty decent. And other than that, I can't really think of anything. This was a pretty good video. Um, fantastic start to um, this ser this serial. And I'm not gonna lie to you. I mean, the trailer the trailer gave me exactly what I thought I'd get from this movie. So it's not like I'm out anything. Like, oh no, the trailer tricked me. So with all that being said, I'm gonna I'm gonna end it off here. Um, but before I go, I do want to say a couple things. One, um, down in the description, I'll leave the link to the first full episode, and I'll also leave a link to the trailer. Um, and I'll tell you what they are, so if you want to watch the trailer first, then watch the show. It's all up to you. Hopefully you enjoy. Um, and all I'm going to say is I I'm amateur filmmaking. It's a tough thing to do, and I'd say these guys did pretty good. Um, my Lucid rating's gonna be an 8 out of 10, which is still quite good, but the only reason I'm doing 8 out of 10 is because I can't get over that the glove used by the monster is Freddy Krueger's glove. That's just, I mean, I don't blame him, but yeah, that's Freddy Krueger's glove. And also that, I mean, the whole idea of that the effects are all digital, which for the alien attack looked pretty good, but for the spider, that... And the spider didn't look so good in the animated form, so. But other than that, Lewis in rating, 8 out of 10. Awesome movie. You should go, you should go watch it. If you don't like it, huh. If you don't like it, make your own video saying how you didn't like it. If you do like it, make your own video saying how you liked it. Or don't make videos at all, since a lot of people don't make videos on YouTube because the YouTube system's broken. Just comment on the original video. Not this one, though, because, I mean, why? It's not like I'm going to read them. <laughs> anyway, peace out, Jennies. Have a good day. Link's in the description, and hope you enjoyed.